Duke Leto Atriides, at first glance, seems to be one of the rare, unambiguously positive characters in Dune. Noble, just merciful, and yet wise and judicious. However, almost at the beginning of the story, the Duke found himself the victim of a conspiracy of his enemies. His house was destroyed. He himself was captured and soon died without being able to take revenge. At this point, his story ended abruptly, and Leto's image was little revealed. I would like to correct this omission and tell more about the fate of Leto Atriides, how he became the head of his house, what wars and intrigues of the past he participated in, and how he sought power in the Empire. Let's get started. Leto Atriides was the only son of the old Duke Paulus Atriides and Helena Atriides, maiden name Rachis. Helena was the daughter of Princess Edwina Carino, who married Count Ilban Rachis. Thus in Helena and in her son Leto flowed also imperial blood. The upbringing of young Leto was mainly his father, the old Duke Paulus. Against the will of his mother, who wanted to give her son exclusively secular education, Paulus instilled in his son a variety of skills. Thus, he forced the boy, among other things, to work with peasants in the fields of Caledon, to get acquainted and socialize with ordinary people to better know his people. When Leto turned 14, he was sent to study on Planet X, a famous technological center of the empire run by the great house Vernius. There Leto befriended the children of Count Dominic Vernius, son Romber and daughter Kylia. On nine, Leto underwent hours of high-tech physical and mental training, learning the most complex technical facilities and comprehending the rules of trade relations. To complete his physical training, Every third morning the friends practiced on an automated training pad. Leto's growing acumen helped him notice the growing discontent of the lower class of Ixian laborers. Leto, walking among them incognito, noticed their growing discontent with the flirtations of powerful Ixians with the production of robotic products that might violate the law on thinking machines. This discontent spilled out when the local workers were encouraged to revolutionize. Formally, it was believed that they rebelled themselves, but in reality they were directed by an agent of the Emperor, who colluded with Tlylaxu, who promised him to organize the production of synthetic spice on this planet. The House of Vernius was overthrown, and its heirs Romber and Kylia, along with Leto, miraculously escaped to the Atriides planet Caledon. Returning home, Leto was soon left without a father. The old duke was killed during the local entertainment, a bullfight. He was mauled by a mad Seleucid bull. After that, young Leto became the new duke. He soon learned that the assassination attempt on his father was organized by his mother, who ordered to inject the bull with powerful drugs, from which the animal went mad. She disliked her husband and believed that he was damaging the reputation of the House of Atriides, so she decided to get rid of him. When Leto learned of this, he banished his mother to the eastern continent and forced her to join a closed order of women and live out the rest of her days in seclusion. Taking over his house, Leto soon enough made himself known to the council of the noble houses, the Landsrad. With his lively mind, integrity, and honesty, he quickly began to gain popularity among the nobility. After sheltering the heirs of House Vernius, Leto spoke in their defense in Landsrad and called to testify against the Tlylaxu who had taken over the planet. But as Leto was traveling back to Caledon, the Harkonnens decided to frame him. They destroyed Tlylaxu's ship and made it look like Leto had done it. The Duke was charged, but he bravely returned to Landsrad to plead his case. Leto had every chance of being condemned and losing all his property, in which case House Atriides would be virtually destroyed. However, the Bene Gesserit entered the game. They handed the new emperor a note allegedly from Leto, in which there were hints that the duke knows about the secret project of the emperor on the artificial synthesis of spice. If this information came out, the balance of power in the empire would be upset, and it would lead to big problems for the emperor. Therefore, the latter, considering the note as blackmail, acquitted Leto in Landsrad and even gave him his personal knife as a token of friendship. But only Duke Leto did not even suspect what lies behind this decision of the Emperor, and that it was at this moment Shaddam IV for the first time saw in Leto a threat to his power. 
As a result of the Landsrad hearings, Duke Leto gained even more popularity and notoriety. Returning home to Kaladin, he took up the affairs of his dominions and proved himself an effective ruler. He was fair to his men and truly cared about their welfare, and his reputation became known throughout the empire. On Caladon, the deposed rulers of Planet X, Romber and Kylia Vernius, his friends, continued to live with him. After getting close to them, Leto fell in love with Kylia and, feeling sorry for her, entered into a love affair with her, without formalizing their relationship. As a result of this relationship, Leto and Kylia had a son, Victor Atriides. Leto loved his son, but because of political difficulties he did not make him his heir, because the house of his mother Kylia lost its status and position in the empire. Kylia loved Leto, however this position began to depress her. She wanted official recognition for herself and her son Victor. So Kylia easily succumbed to the entreaties of her maid Chiara, who offered to kill Leto so that Victor would become the official heir of House Atriides. Kylia and Chiara secretly planted a bomb on Leto's ship as he traveled to the western continent of Caledon on a visit. However, the assassination attempt did not go according to plan. Leto was joined by his son Victor, as well as Kylia's brother Romber. The explosion ultimately killed not the Duke, but his son Victor, while Rombor was mutilated. Kylia, having learned that her actions had killed her son and maimed her brother, and having discovered that her maid Chiara was an agent of the Harkonnens, threw herself from the tower in despair. Some time after this tragedy, Leto agreed to take a concubine from Bene Gesserit Lady Jessica, who was entrusted with the mission to give birth to the Duke's daughter, so that in the future the heir of the Harkonnens would marry her, and from their union the long awaited Kwisatz Haderach would appear. But it was still a long way off and other trials awaited the duke. Leto sought to elevate the house of Atriides and used opportunities to increase his influence and power. When conflict broke out in the empire between the two powerful houses of Mauritani and Akaz, Duke Atriides saw an opportunity to gain a strong ally. He decided to marry the daughter of Archduke Akaz, Lady Elisa. The duke truly loved his concubine Jessica as much as she loved him. However, he didn't want to officially marry her because his bachelor status opened up great opportunities for him to ally with other great houses. For example, with House Ikez, Leto supported House Ikez in the conflict and announced preparations for his wedding to Elisa. Numerous guests arrived at Caledon, as well as the bride and her entourage. However, in the midst of the celebration, almost at the altar, the planet's capital was attacked. Flying knives were activated and attacked the gathered people. The Duke managed to survive. However, Elisa and her bodyguard were killed. It turned out that the assassination attempt was organized by the head of the House of Mauritani Viscount Hundro. His act unleashed a war that would later be called the War of Assassins. Leto sent Atriides' troops to the aid of House Akaz, and together they defeated the Mauritani army. When the enemy's capital was almost taken, the Emperor's troops arrived to calm the conflict. However, as a result, House Mortani was still destroyed, its leader committed suicide, and the Akaz won. This was another reason why Emperor Shaddam feared Leto Atriides, for he had indirectly opposed House Carino in this conflict and won. Upon returning to Kaladin, Duke Leto solidified his tactic of not taking Lady Jessica as his wife and remaining open to possible alliances. He understood the danger emanating from the Emperor, and also knew full well that the Harkonnens wanted to destroy his house. In such circumstances, the Atriides needed to be open and flexible politically, and the Duke did not give up hope of taking a representative of another powerful house as a wife and unite in the fight against their enemies. The Emperor understood the reasons for Leto's behavior and saw it as a direct threat to his throne because of which he finally decided to organize the destruction of the House of Atriides together with the Harkonnens. Realizing that the Emperor's main trump card was the invincible legions of Sardakers, Duke Leto began to look for ways to strengthen his own army. Eventually he succeeded. He received the first squad of warriors who were as good as the Sardakers. But for now, they were too few to secure the entire House of Atriides. So Leto sought other means. 
When the emperor gave him control of Arrakis, Leto realized it was a trap, but he obeyed anyway, hoping he could outweed his enemies and make the best of the situation for himself. He discovered that the Freemen were just as good as the Sardaukers in their fighting skills. You probably remember the rest of the story. Duke Leto moved to Arrakis, but there, due to the treachery of a close man in his entourage, Dr. Yu, he was caught by surprise by the Harkonnen soldiers and the Emperor. Atriide's men were killed, the Duke himself was taken prisoner. Lastly, Leto attempted to kill Baron Vladimir Harkonnen while he was interrogating him. Leto's tooth contained a potent poison. The duke broke the capsule in front of the baron, but the attempt failed. The duke himself died, but he could not take his enemy to the grave. So ended the story of Duke Leto Atriides. And not to say that his finale unfair. Leto Atriides actively played political games, intrigued and achieved the growth of his influence. So his murder was treacherous, but became a natural finale for a man who seeks power.